Alright, so in this lecture I'm going to teach you how to do a simple bouncing ball. Uh, first I'm going to set up my scene real quick. I'm going to make myself a plane. So I have a ground plane that my object is going to bounce on. I'm going to get rid of my grid. Basically the grid's down there. Put show. Get rid of grid. Alright. Several ways I can not select this geometry. I can either go up here basically different things you can select to turn off. I'm going to select geometry right here so I don't accidentally select anything, I, any geometry that I don't want. Or I can actually make a layer. Create layer. Click this back on. I select that object or do it this way. Either way is fine. Preference is up to you. With this one you can just change it to template if you want to actually see through it for whatever reason. Or you can make it straight up a reference. All right, I'm using 2015 Maya on this one. Uh, so things vary a little bit different with the icons. Obviously, my auto key is a key here, but on 2016, it's a little different icon. But everything's pretty much the same. The basic things we're going to be going over is the curve editor and this general curves right here. So to start off my animation, um, I just want to do the bouncing ball. And I'm going to basically keep it in the a front view, more or less. I'm not going to have it in different aspects. I'm just going to keep it straight straight ahead for, forward. First thing I want to do is set a key, bring the ball up about yay height, which right in the uh, put it in the channel box. My translation Y is at 10. And I'm going to go through, say about frame 12, place this at zero. So I know it's hitting zero right there. It's touching the bottom the, uh, the ground. So my ball is going to come down, it's just going to hit. I want to give it about the same amount of frames. I have zero, about 12 frames. Let's see, about 24 frames. Set a key. And then I want to, because what, what's going to happen is I have the ball bounce several times, but each time it bounces, it's going to slow down and, and uh, gravity's going to slowly take over and it's going to slow down as it bounces and eventually stop. So as I spread out the keys, I set my keys. I'm going to set all my keys. Except for this one's going up. Basically, I'm going to be holding it, dropping it down. It's going to hit 12. I set the key frame at 24, key frame at uh, 34. I want to start making it a little bit shorter. 42, say 48, say 52. So what's going to happen? It's going to hit. I want to have it bounce back up about half the height that it started from. So now it's going to come down. And I was going to do that uh, about halfway in between the. Uh, from frame 12 to 24. And then the same thing here. I'm going to have it bounce up almost the same height as it was in here. And then as I go through these next keyframes, I'm going to have it bounce a little bit lower. A little lower. So it almost doesn't even look like it bounces. This way is going to look like a, a ball that's sort of bouncing and it's sort of coming to a stop. All right, several things here now. Right now, we have uh, the ball coming down, and what's happening right before it hits is easing in. Like that easing in is basically one of the principles of animation. It basically means that the animation, the uh, animation is slowing down before it gets to a stopping point, and it's it's going slowly up to reach this other point. When a ball bounces, it doesn't know where the ground is. The ball is being is being let go, so it's going to hit at any time, and it doesn't know exactly where that ball's at or what the ground's at. So, what you want to do is you want the the gravity, the ball, to sort of fall and keep picking up speed until it hits the ground, and then it's going to pop back up. So, with that, I want to jump into my curve editor. I want to go to the, my side panels, and hit this button. That way, I can see my animation. Zoom it out a little bit, and my curve editor. I'm going to go ahead and move my channel box out the way. So right now I'm only working in translation Y. So my, my curve editor, I can click translation Y and it will just have the Y axis. And this is my what my curves currently look like. So if I was to play, it slowly goes into that. So I want to demonstrate what it looks like when it the balls let go, slowly it's going to gather up speed. Right here is gather up speed. Right in here has it sort of curves nicely into this key uh, 12. That means it's sort of easing into it. We don't want it to ease in. We just want it to abruptly get there. So with that, I want to select the key, break the tangent, grab the arms, 
move my curve so that it's uh, close to a V. And the same thing with the other one. Now demonstrate, or now uh, just look at how different this one is versus how this one's going to bounce. The first bounce and the second bounce. So the first bounce is really fast and it hits and it pops right back. Everything after that feels like it's really soft and it's like slowing down right before it hits. So what I want to do with basically all my curves that hit the ground is break that tangent. Or is uh, yeah, break the tangents. You can do it all you can select all the curves at once on the bottom and do that. Then go in one by one. Sort of give it that V shape. Oops. And then as you get to the slower ones, those little, the small ones, just select the surrounding keys, press F to zoom in, and continue to do the same thing. And the same thing will apply. You know, you still try to make that V shape. And at the very end, it's going to have a come down. It's just going to hit. So now, if I look at my animation, it's going to feel like it, it's actually the ball is actually bouncing. Now right now, this probably feels like maybe a ping pong ball or, or even a basketball at some point. Uh, so what I want to do, is I'm going to go ahead and grab my one controller, press F, with the Y. Now if I, if I wanted to make this feel a little bit more, a little more animated, have a little bit more weight so that when a ball hits the ground, it pops up. And right when it hits the peak, it doesn't automatically start coming down. It's going to hold just a little bit. So one thing I, the thing I want to do now is I want to change all my keys to weighted tangents. You can go to tangents. Oops, sorry. Go to keys, or curves, sorry. Go to curves, weighted tangents. And then all your tangents will turn into like these little barbells. And then you can either go to uh, tangents and uh, have them free tangents, which will unlock them like this. Or you can go to the little icon up here, free tangents. Either or is fine, but with these free, when you free your tangents, the thing with that is now you have free access to sort of drag them wherever and whichever you want. When you just have the normal tangents, you can't. Uh, you can only you can only move them. You can't uh, expand them out or anything. And the way I'm doing that is I'm drag selecting over the the tangent arms and I'm middle mouse button hold to to move those. So I want a free tangent. And I'm just going to stretch it out just a little bit so it sort of gets a bell shape. And I may need to come in and just adjust uh, my other tangents so that I keep my curves a nice little solid curve. Now what's, what this is going to do is it's going to add a little bit more... Uh, oh, there we go. A little bit more weight to the ball, a little bit more gravity to it, a little bit more personality. And don't get too carried away with it, but uh, it is something you can you can play with. And it's really subtle. You sort of sometimes uh, the viewer doesn't really see it. It's more of a you sort of feel it. So this now gives the the, the ball a nice bouncy feel to it. All right. So with that, that is basically how to make a bouncing ball. Just being straightforward, just dropping it down.